there are so many things that are really like out there now, like so many opportunities, uh, gurus, different things. For me, what I found to be most beneficial was that there really is no cap. You can grow this, grow yourself at whatever pace you want to um, and really take it whatever level you'd like. Hey, Elise, welcome to the Bill McIntosh Show. Uh, we've got Elise Hall in the house today. So excited to have you on. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, awesome. I'm excited to be here for sure. Thanks for having me, Bill. Cool, cool. So Elise, let me ask you, I know that you've been uh, involved in online digital marketing now for what, six months or so? Yeah, so I've been, um, I got started first learning about affiliate marketing and just how to how to grow in the digital marketing space back in January of this year. So it's been about five months Oh, right. Months okay, now. sure. Yep. Yeah, about five months. Cool, cool. And were you brand new to the online marketing world when you started looking into all of this back in January, or had you tried other things previously? So this was new for me as far as really learning to make money online specifically. I had did, um, I had kind of dabbled okay. in the self-employment realm, trying to do barbering and then got introduced to network marketing. So I did that uh, for about two years, kind of really trying to get that business up and going at a good pace prior to being introduced to online marketing, digital marketing, and really understanding that this was the lane I wanted to be in. Right, okay. And what what led you to the conclusion that affiliate marketing would be better a better route for you to go rather than uh say network marketing or some other form of making money online yeah no that's a great question um because there are so many things that are really like out there now like so many opportunities uh gurus different things for me what i found to be most beneficial was that there really is no cap you can grow this grow yourself at whatever pace you want to um, and really take it whatever level you like, but also that it brought it me up to like uh, meet people and be able to do business with people from all over the world. With network marketing for me, it was more so right. uh, your inner circle, family, friends, those people that you can access on your Facebook list. Um, but this business, I'm able to post content that reaches people that I never would have crossed paths with had we not been in the same hashtag space right. or just online space in general. So I think that's been the most beneficial, just learning how I can expand that. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's a great explanation. And of all of the social media platforms that we have to choose from to generate leads for your, you know, for your affiliate marketing business, um, what what platform or platforms have you focused in on in the past few months to generate leads and why why that platform um tiktok tiktok has been the way for me and okay. bill i was one of those people who never wanted to get on tiktok when it first got popular i was like oh god another another app that's just a distraction these kids are dancing on this thing i did not think i was going to create a tiktok <laughs> But if I learned anything in business, because yeah. even with network marketing, though it's not my lane, I still learned a lot of lessons there. You still make the trend your friend. Right. Right. Any Whatever the trend is, you still have to lean into that as yeah. a business owner. So I got on TikTok and it has been, I mean, I'm able to, I woke up to new leads this morning. Uh, so it's, it's definitely been effective. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting, isn't it? When you kind of wake up in the morning and uh, check your email, and you you realize that you've got more new leads coming into your into your funnel, into your world, thanks to just posting a mm -hmm. TikTok video or whatever. Yeah, now that's yeah, that's an and I'm having way feeling. more fun than I thought and, too. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Cool. Uh, you're having more fun than you thought you would actually doing the videos or just the business in general? Yeah. Um, a little bit of both, actually, especially with the videos. I'm having more fun than I thought I would uh, post in videos. But also from the business side, it, it right. it's really had me cultivate some, some good discipline skills, just ways to stay focused but still have fun. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's been, been fun in both areas. Okay. 
So would you say it was a bit of a gradual process where at first you were pretty nervous and didn't want to put yourself on camera on TikTok, but then as you did it, it, it just gradually became more comfortable. And now you've gone all the way to from, from not wanting to do it at all to actually enjoying it and uh, calling it fun. Was that a gradual process yeah. or, or did it happen pretty quickly or tell us about um, that? It, I think being comfortable and not second guessing what I was posting, wanting to do a lot of takes before posting something was a gradual process. Early on for me to just get on camera, right. I wasn't as as hesitant. I think from being, again, in network marketing, I was on camera, on Zoom meetings, doing different things. So I was okay being on camera, but actually uh, editing right. some videos, we're, we're our biggest critics sometimes. So I think I was way too critical with myself initially, but now I record a video, I post it and let it do its thing. Um, and there's, you know, initially starting stuff, yeah. a lot of times there's a lot of emotion with it. And so I was really emotionally driven at first. I was right. excited, but sometimes when you, as the, uh, kind of business side kicks in, it removes some of that emotion and you're like, wait, I actually got stuff to do. Uh, so it gets to be overwhelming. So I think just getting a system in place, learning what I needed to do, um, as leads started coming in, allowed me to really put to a good practice, good strategies in place. And so it makes it a lot easier to post, um, consistently because I understand that when I post, I'm making money or when right. I post as a potential lead. So, so yeah, it was definitely a gradual process, I think, to right. get the right mindset about posting. Okay, cool, cool. And how many times a day on average or and how many days a week do you post something on TikTok on average? During the week, like Monday through Friday, I'm typically posting between three and four videos. And on the weekends, it's about between two and three. Um, right. I get more distracted with family and, and life on the weekends, honestly. So I lowered that standard for myself yeah. so that I didn't feel bad or like I hadn't accomplished anything. So I know now that I'm only posting about two to three times on the weekends and three to four during the week. Oh, right. Cool. No, that's a, yeah. that's a great amount, you know, really. So, and how do you keep yourself on track, Elise, to stay disciplined with that because I, I know what it's like trying to post three to four videos a day. Sometimes life can get in the way and all that. So how, how do you deal with that? Do you schedule a time that you stick to or you just do it on the fly sort of spontaneously? How does that side of it work for you? Um, I do a little bit of both. Honestly, Bill, I have time that I carve out in my day, Monday through Friday. Um, I get started around 8.30 a.m. and I work focus time until 12. Um, and that includes just like planning, getting right. some inspiration, not mindlessly scrolling on TikTok, but looking to see what's working, looking at hashtags, and then also sure. um, kind of yeah. doing the back end stuff, writing emails, just whatever my business needs at that time. I do that between 8.30 a.m. and 12 um, during the right. week. But as far as really creating content, um, that to me, I batch create whenever I feel, if I'm in a creative mood, I'm gonna keep recording videos. I really have just learned to lean into um, what I'm feeling at that time. I'll create a lot of videos if I'm in a creative mood. Right. And then sometimes during my planning, during my yeah. 8.30 to 12 working, I have to stop and record um, because I don't have any videos. So I have to be more mindful at times, but for the most part, I batch create when I'm feeling right. good, uh, you know, and momentum, you know, keeps me oh, going. If I'm creating one bit. Yeah. After I create one video, I'm like, oh, wait, I can do another one. I can do another one, <laughs> you know, and just save them in my drafts. So right. That's kind of right. how I've started to do that. No, that's cool. That's 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 great advice. And um, in terms of, you know, creating the content itself, it seems like you watch what other people are doing, maybe top affiliate marketers in your niche, kind of watch what they're doing and use their videos mm -hmm. as inspiration and, and learn from the hashtags they're using and things like that. Is that is that a fair statement or is it more just you go with the flow, whatever you're kind of feeling creatively in the moment? Yeah, no, I definitely study the market. And, and by, again, like you were saying, look at the hashtags that I'm um, putting in my on my post anyway and looking and seeing what's working what's being viewed 
What are people looking for right now? And I will recreate those with my own twist. And then sometimes as I'm just scrolling and enjoying, um, I may see, uh, hear a, tr a sound that I like or, or something that I can apply to my niche. It could be so random, have nothing to do with affiliate marketing, but I'll think, how can I apply this to the right. lane that I'm in? And I'll just recreate a right. video, change the words on the screen, and that could come from anywhere. You know, TikTok loves to throw some random stuff yeah. at your for you page. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 which is what makes the platform so powerful, right? Um, it does. I, unlike all the other social media platforms before it, they're, they'll push out your content to people that don't follow you or don't know you, but the algorithm thinks may enjoy your content. So, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And would you say at this point, Elise, after five months from being brand new to five months down the road, is your business uh, more successful than you expected it to be, less successful, or, you know, in terms of like, well, let's just say in terms of revenue that you're making from affiliate marketing and commissions, um, how would you describe your success so far? Um, I would kind of say I'm, I feel that I'm right on track, honestly. Uh, what I love is that there's no false oh, income claims with Legendary Marketer or any way that I've learned. And so for me, I, I really feel what you get out of it is what you put into it. So in these five months, I've had some times where I haven't been as consistent, where I didn't treat it like a business, um, where posting on TikTok was fun but understanding there were still other things I had to do on the back end. So I feel that I'm right on track because I've been able to, you know, figure out new problems that I have, apply myself to learn them, uh, to figure those things out, and now kind of seeing the benefits of it. So I, as far as revenue, I feel um, I still have more opportunity to grow there. I would like to see greater revenue and profit margins coming from it, but I feel I've had to put more into it myself as well um i've right. been getting out what i put in okay. originally right so now i'm ramping up what right. i'm putting in in yeah. a different way right right okay cool cool and you did mention legendary marketer and i know that because mm -hmm. i was your business plan advisor with legendary um i know that's where you initially invested to learn the skills for affiliate marketing would you say that uh at this point for someone who's just starting out who's brand new that investing in a, a high level training to learn these skills is a good idea or like five months later would you do you ever say to yourself actually i could have figured this out myself on my own just watching youtube videos or whatever How, what's your sense of what's your feeling about the training and and the return on investment you've had from that. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, um, for me, Bill, I feel like the training is priceless. Uh, I, if I were to go back five months from now, I would still make the same decision to get training. Affiliate marketing and digital marketing is a simple concept, but sometimes even the most simple things can be confusing if it's not, if you don't have the right mindset or the right foundational training with it. So um, for me with Legendary and just learning the different skills. And another thing I love about Legendary too is that it's constantly being revised, right? There's always updated new information. What's happening right now, you're going to get from those resources at, right. with Legendary. And I think that's the most important thing. If someone posted a YouTube video a year ago, what they know about affiliate marketing as a business model may be true, but what's actually working today that changes consistently, especially with the algorithms and social media yeah. these days. So, um, so I think, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even five months later, I think that training has been extremely beneficial and I still lean into it. Now I go back and rewatch okay. trainings. I tap into the, the ones on Thursdays. Um, so yeah, so it's been, it's been awesome. I would definitely do it again. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's great to know. Yeah. That's great to know. So I guess my last question would be for someone who's brand new, um, looking at all these different ways of making money online, like drop shipping or Amazon FBA or what, what have you, um, and they finally decide on affiliate marketing, what, what advice would you give that person? I think the best piece of advice is to treat your business like a business. 
right? If you want a hobby, get your hobby, um, you know, go out and figure that out. But if you want to change your lifestyle, if you want to change your financial situation, then you have to treat your business like a business. And I know it's sometimes hard for people to switch their mindset to say posting content on social media is a business. But if you wrap your head around the fact that you can actually make money and create a lifestyle for yourself with this business model and treat it with that value that it has, um, even if you just paid a couple bucks to get started, if you treat it with the value that it has, you can really be successful. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is coming right out of the gate. Treat your business like a business. Okay. Yeah, that's amazing advice. Yeah. That's amazing advice. And, um, you know, I spent 30 years in the real estate industry selling real estate. And um, the statistic in real estate in the U.S. is 87% of agents, new agents are no longer in the business just three years later. And if I had to if I had to name one reason, it's because the very same thing. They get into real estate, not thinking of it as a business and realizing that because it's a business, you have to learn a lot of different skills. You've got to learn prospecting, marketing, sales, um, effective communication. You've got to be disciplined with how you measure your time. Um, there's a lot of things to learn. And um, if I had a dollar for every time a real estate agent told me, or not an agent, but someone thinking about becoming an agent. Oh, I'd be a great agent. I love looking at homes. Like as if that's all there was to it, right? You have to enjoy looking at homes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they just didn't didn't compute that it's actually a business. Um, and so I think that's great advice for people looking to make money online, whether it's affiliate marketing or anything, you've got to treat it like a business if you want it to treat you like a business owner. So it's a, it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said you will get out of this business, what you put into it. So, well, look, I think this has been amazing uh, advice and, you know, so often on podcasts, they have the big name gurus who have been doing it for five, 10 years, making millions. And uh, that's great. Sure. But I think I, I think for people either just starting or thinking of starting, I think it's more valuable, actually, to hear from people like you uh, or, or, or myself, for that matter, that are still quite new in the business um, because we're just like, you know, we haven't read the whole book. We're just a, f- a few pages ahead in the story. Sure. And uh, so so I think. I think your story and your experience will be a lot more relatable for new people than, you know, one of the gurus that's been doing it for years, making millions. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show, Elise, and uh, love to have you back, you know, in a few months uh, from now and check in with you and see how things are going then. I'm sure you'll be doing great. Yeah, no, this has been a great opportunity, Bill. Thank you so much um, for the value that you've added just in helping me understand this industry and also, again, just for this opportunity to share. So this has been great. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure working with you and uh, and we'll chat real soon. Awesome. Thank you.